We have an honor and a privilege to represent heaven today. Amen. That's what we do. See, a pulpit, the only reason why churches have a pulpit is because sometimes you have pastors like me who need a place to put their stuff. And the reason why you have tables in front of you is so you can have your drink, your notepads, your Bible, everything that you need to take notes. That's why the church provides tables. Now we're out of tables. That's why he's moving us on up. <laughs> he never said we were going to fill every chair, but he did say we were going to fill every table. And we have filled every table. And I have a feeling that this is just the beginning of something new. But to him, it's not new. It's the same. And so we're going to do a little bit something different when it comes to worship this morning. You have your lyrics. Normally, I put lyrics up on here on the screen with the music. But I had to do something different. We got two songs, and then we have a third song, which is going to be done in sign language. And because of communication issues, and I take full responsibility of that, they were prepared to do one song, and we have another one. So... We're going to let the Lord and the Holy Spirit do what he does best, and that is control their situation, because I certainly cannot do that. So if you're used to watching words on here for the first two songs, they're not going to be. It's something more important, much more important, okay? So trust me when I say that God knows what he's doing. Good stuff. Today is our three-month anniversary as a church. It's Mom's six-year anniversary. It's what? Aww. It's what? I didn't hear. It's six years that I remarried. Well, praise okay. God. Yeah, we got two anniversaries. <laughs> we couldn't do it without. And you know how I know that? Because the stats tell us that we can't do it without you. Look what the Lord has done. SpartaBibleChurch.org, 1,140 visitors in three months. 73% of them return back to the site. 18 countries. Facebook, 117 likes. As of this morning, I counted 120. 1,217 people were reached this week. It's because of you. Something moves you and you share it. And then it moves them and they share it. That's 1,200 a week. Amen. That means we can reach 12, just, and this, that's minimal numbers. That This isn't even our busiest week. We've reached up to 3,200 people in a week with our posts. You wonder why Facebook is so important? Because there's 680 million people a day on there. And if Jesus were here, he would have a page. I guarantee it. And he'd have the most likes out of any person in history. It's still why this, this, it's still, that's the reason why this is still the number one sold book and Amen. will always be. Amen. Our YouTube page, which has all of our recordings, 689 videos have been watched of this church. 2,093 uh, 2 minutes have been watched. We have 10 subscribers. Anytime you go to YouTube, if you like a page, you hit subscribe. 10 people said, every time you upload a video, I want to know about it. 23 countries. It's not just here. We know how this church has changed your life. We can see it. And if we can't see it, then it doesn't work. But it does. He's faithful. And thank you. Because again, there is no I in team. We are all one in Christ. Each one of our gifts makes it possible. Whether if it's signing a song, which I can't do, I can barely sing a song. Whether if it's teaching, whether it's hospitality, or teaching. God's got something special for you today. In the form of two clowns, three clowns. 
I'm a clown. No. Your pastor is a clown. You can watch a video and know that I'm a clown. And guess what? I just don't have a red nose most of the time. I'm a hobo. <laughs> That's true. Thank you. Yeah. That's true. Thank you for correcting me, Maddie. Of all people. <laughs> well, thank goodness for that. Because it's hot in here. And I'm taking all my clothes off. I have all my clothes, just my jacket. What a blessing that was. How truthful is that? Do you have that heart again? This is the heartbeat of our church, in case you don't know. Love and truth. It is through the love of Christ that we are who we are. Amen. And it is through his truth only found right here. Yes. yes. And when you put these two together, there's no better formula than these right here. So if you're looking for a church, I'm, I'm speaking to you on the web right now watching this, what are you waiting for? You can meet us over at Spring Street and Bachman, right on the corner, because that's where we're going to be, at least a couple weeks. So get ready, buckle up, and hold on, Sparta. Guess what? Whether you like it or not, we're here to stay. <laughs> and no denomination, no body of elders, no one, no one can separate us from the love of God. Amen. This timing is perfect, isn't it? How you doing, brother? You're a future millionaire? Praise God, me too. <laughs> Let me tell you something, my riches have nothing to do with gold or silver, but what he does through you. Are you ready for the truth? I came to deliver today. We're actually going to finish up on our teaching on Jesus Christ. We first started back in February, but wait a second, we have some children here. And Carolyn, based upon the authority of her teacher Lillian, who based upon her authority, God, Carolyn is going to teach the children something this morning. So if you're interested, children, go on over to the table. She's got a lesson plan and some activities for you. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your son. Who because of all that he did, we get to have eternal life for eternity. That's why it's called eternal life. It's eternal. And as we prepare ourselves for the teaching today, As we prepare ourselves for the teaching this morning, Father, we open our hearts and minds to the truth. We ask that the Holy Spirit will enlighten the truth, that we might take it within our souls and grow in the grace and the knowledge of who you are. As we finish up on teaching about Jesus, always know that everything we teach goes right back to you. It's kind of funny how sometimes, Father, they think that the words in reds are read or just what you said, but you spoke the entire Bible. The whole book should be read. But we thank you so much that we can come here this morning to learn your word, that we can grow in you. And I just ask that as we finish up this teaching today, that you be glorified by every moment. We thank you so much, and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 The glorification of Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection and his return. 
That is our topic for today. Again, the glorification of Jesus Christ, which is referring to his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's the glorification. I know you thought just him being dipped in water was it, but that's not it. And his return. That's what we're waiting for. The blessed hope, his return. Amen. During the incarnation, now if you haven't been here before, I'm going to use some big words, but the good news is the Lord told me there would be new people here, so allow me this opportunity to bless you. During the incarnation, which is the coming in the flesh, the humanity of Christ became lower than the angels. But through resurrection, which is when Christ died and returned to life, his accession, when he took up, when he was taken up to heaven, in his resurrected body, and his session, sitting down with God, his humanity became superior than the angels. One more time. During the incarnation, the humanity of Christ became lower than the angels, but through the resurrection and his ascension and his session, his humanity became superior to angels. Amen. Turn with me to Hebrews. John, this is the book that uh, commands us to make coffee in the morning for our wives. Hebrews. <laughs> so men, stop asking the woman to make you coffee. You wonder why things are so messed up in your house? You're out of order. I'm joking. Just like their song said, do you think God really cares who makes coffee in the morning? No, as long as there's coffee, that's all he cares about. <laughs> We're going to go to chapter 1, starting at verse 3. Now, again, because we have some new people here, allow me this opportunity to educate you on a few things. When I say something, I have the words to back it up. That's very important. Otherwise, you think they're my words. And if they're my words, they're going to return void every time. But if they're his words, they never return void, ever. Amen. Amen. You're taking them in. You have an instant iPod recorder in your brain, and it's recording right now, and the Holy Spirit has the microphone on. And everything that's being taught is being recorded for a future time. And down the road, when you need it most, will he bring it back up again? Amen. So just know, we got an amen or finally. You all are so quiet all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if you're alive, but the good news is I already know you're dead. <laughs> because you're dead just like me, but alive in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen. Look, John, you come, and all of a sudden we turn Pentecostal. <laughs> Brother, we've been Pentecostal before you ever got here. You should see Richard. This boy gets behind the pulpit, and the cross even shakes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The tree shakes. We use humor here because it's important. It's easy to cry in church, but it's not so easy to laugh sometimes. Amen. That's why he gave you clowns and a clown. <laughs> Hebrews 1, starting at verse 3. And he, who's he? Who's he? What a wonderful question. Jesus Christ is our topic. He is the radiance of His glory and the exact representation of His nature and upholds all things by the word of His power. When He had made purification of sins, He sat down at the right hand. Oh, that's how we know it's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Context is fabulous. Right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels as He has inherited a more excellent name than they. Turn to Hebrews 2.9 if you need to, or it's on your same page, depending on what you're reading. 2.9, Hebrews 2.9. But we do see him who has been made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God, by what? The grace of God. By the grace of God, he might taste death for just those who are a tie? 
For those who wear white past Labor Day. For those who are circumcised. For everyone. It's so clear. Mm. I love it when it's clear like that. Any questions? I don't think so. For everyone. For it was fitting for him. For whom are some things? All things. And through whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory, to perfect, which is maturity, the author of their salvation through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one Father, for which reason he is not ashamed to call him brethren. Remember when I told you anytime you see brethren or you see beloved, he's referring to the church, us. So if a pastor takes a scripture and says we're going to apply it to an unbeliever, but the book starts off with to the brethren, it's misapplied. Amen. Saying, I will proclaim thy name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing thy praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children whom God has given me. His crucifixion had to come before his glorification. The cross had to come before the crown. The cross had to come before the crown. There's an order to everything. Soon, we will begin a teaching on the tabernacle that you will begin to see and know that how everything relating to the tabernacle again goes back here. Everything inside the Bible you will find always goes back to here. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's why it's called a cross. Cross road. A cross. Let's talk about his return. Why was Jesus sent to heaven? The Bible says to prepare a place. For who? For us. So if he was sent to heaven to prepare a place, why do we worry? Is it because we don't know that he was sent to heaven to prepare a place for us? That whether if it's summer good or summer bad, he still was sent to prepare a place. Amen. Turn with me to the book of John. Some of these things that I'm saying are going to hit you like a ton of bricks. And when it does, you need to be able to go back in the Bible and find out where it is. So when someone says something to you in the future, which I guarantee God will now do because I've said this as a test, you will be able to point and show him or her why you believe what you believe. We're not doing this just so I could stand up here and ramble off a bunch of stuff. You have to be able to defend your faith. Because there will come a time that this word will be gone. And all you will have is what's in here. Yes. Yes. Remember when I told you? You have an iPod in your brain that's recording. It's recording everything, all the scriptures. That's why it never returns void. There will come a time where it could be in a prison. It could be in a building that we're locked in. That an unbeliever could be next to you. And they're not going to know truth. But you're going to have an opportunity to share it. And if while you were sitting in church looking all nice and pretty, if you were not paying attention, they're going to look at you and they're going to go, what do I do? And depending on how, what kind of a student you were in class, Bible class, will you be able to give an answer, an account, as a witness? That's why at Sparta Bible Church, we prepare you so you can be that witness. So you can go and make disciples wherever he has you go. 
because we never know when we're going to need it. It could be at 2 o'clock in the morning. It could be 4 in the afternoon. It could be lunchtime at a drive-thru. It could be anywhere. Amen. But the fact is he went to prepare a place. Hello? He's trying to prepare you. He's preparing you right now. Where is he? Up there, but where also is he? Right here. And he's preparing. That's what it's all about. John 14, 1. Look at this. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, which he did, and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Many still wonder if Christ is going to come. If he came right now, this place would be empty. Praise God. Amen. Because we've done our job. Thank you, Lord. And trust me, if I knew you were not of Christ, I would have started with an invitation. This church knows me. I start with an invitation. Thank you. But there is not a doubt in my mind. The moment I saw you two, I knew you were saved. Not because of what you were dressed like. Not because of what you were acting like. Because I could see the fruit of the Spirit from the words that were coming out of your mouth. Well, thank you, Lord. And you can definitely tell the clowns are saved. No <laughs> doubt about that. Look at those bow ties. At least the yellow one. I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. There are three other things we're called. The bride. The body of Christ, like we gathered here as one. And the royal priesthood. The challenge I have with a royal priesthood is there's a bit of reverence in that. And sometimes people have a little bit of a problem with reverence and they get too excited. I'm a priest! If you're a priest, that means you're a slave. And you're no greater than your master. But when the priest lifts himself up, trying to be higher than the master, there's a challenge with that. We are called the bride. Turn with me to Revelation 19. I did not give it this name. This name was here before I ever existed. Revelation 19.7. By the way, just to let you know, for those of you that are running out of paper, Walmart is having a sale of 17 cent books. And I bought a whole bunch of them, and we're going to buy a whole bunch more because we're going to need them. That's the reason why we have tables, is so that you can write. So that later, if you forget what it is, you can go back and you can look at your notes and say, I remember when he talked about that. Or if you're having an argument with your spouse about something and you want to throw the Bible at your spouse, all you got to do is go to your notes. <laughs> so even if anything, at least you have something to go back to. Because remember, your words return void. His word doesn't. I know you don't do that. Y'all are perfectly in your marriages. I know. <laughs> The bride, Revelation 19.7. Let us be miserable. No. no. Let us rejoice and be glad. Now this word glad, just so you know, has multiple meanings. One of them has to do with a superabundance of happiness. And trust me, if someone is irritating you and mistreating you, just be glad in front of them. It will irritate them even more. They always say kindness kills. If someone's after you and they're all aggressive, just tell them you love them. And ask them, have you ever heard of Jesus? They'll run so fast you won't even know what hit them. Instead of sitting there fighting with them. Don't waste your energy. It's not worth it. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to who? Him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride 
has made herself ready. We're ready. That's right. Herself. We're female. She. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Starting in verse 11. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers. For the what? Equipping of the saints. For the work of service. To the building up of the body of Christ. That's why we're here, to be built up, to be equipped for a good work. Your work? No. His work. His plan, His purpose, His glory. Every time. Turn me to 1 Peter. Starting in chapter 2. Verse 9, chapter 2, 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into has marvelous light. Richard, remember yesterday at your house when I told you about all these ministries that we have? They're his. They're not ours. The moment we try and claim anything and try and take the glory from him, he removes it. Amen. To get our attention, to let us know that all that you have is his. This pulpit is His. If I took the glory, He would remove me so fast and bring you someone else. Can you imagine if you mistreated me and I got out of fellowship and God removed me and He brought someone to you like this? Turn to the Bible, Matthew, Mark 4. <laughs> Isn't that great, church? So don't mistreat your pastor. You might get rid of him. <laughs> no, that can't happen. Why? Because we started it. But we didn't start it. He started it through us. Amen. Yeah. We she can't even fire me. Amen. And I can't fire her. And I can't fire any one of you. Because I didn't put you here. He did. Thank you, Lord. The moment I come up here and say you're not doing it right is when I am out of order and you have permission to leave. That's why I don't get into your business. That's why I don't tell you what you need to do. Because you have a Holy Spirit in you and that Holy Spirit who's in you brought you here and I've got the same Holy Spirit in me and I'm not going to get up against your Holy Spirit nor does my Holy Spirit want to go up against you. Amen. It's so simple. It isn't about a title. It has nothing to do with the title, Carolyn. Nothing. Because we're all one in Christ. We're all here for the same purpose. Amen. You're only sitting over here for one reason. Because there's something she is having you learn. Now, if you're older than her, you might be sitting there going, well, I'm older than her. What does she know? <laughs> Guess what? God will deal with you on that. Because he's the one that put her in. I didn't. I didn't say she could teach you. The clown did. <laughs> the clown has the authority. The clown has the authority over this ministry. Now, yes, spiritually, I have authority over her, but I'm not going to use it. Not for bad. Come on, come on. But by mentioning it, it's for good. Amen. To show you. 
that if God chooses to use grace to teach, get in God's way, I dare you. Yeah. He'll right. snap that neck so fast you won't even know what will be hit. I know, I've been there, I've done it. I've thrown stones before, I'm guilty of it. I have. I don't like my pastor, what does he know? I can do a better job than he can, oh yeah? Here you go, chew on this for a while. <laughs> Humility is so important. Recognizing authority is so important. That's why we can't take the glory away from him in anything that we do. Brother, I'm not taking over the fish. That's your ministry, brother. I can't even come close to that. When, when I've got people who don't even eat fish eating it, what does that tell you? That God knows what he's doing. He's in control. He has authority even over fish. We are a royal priesthood on earth. His royal family is being formed. We are being formed. Do you know what we're being formed by? The Holy Spirit. He's the one forming us. He's the one who places each church age believer in these seats. He puts them in here. Half the time I don't know why. I don't question it. I don't argue with it. I don't care what you wear. I don't care if you got tattoos. I don't care if you got earrings. I don't care if you have hair to hear or no hair. I don't care. The only thing I care is when we're teaching, you're paying attention so you can learn. Otherwise, you're going to come to me in a week and say, life's falling apart, Pastor, and I don't know what to do. And I'd say, well, if you were paying attention while I was teaching, you wouldn't be in this problem. No, I wouldn't do that. You know me better than that. But there's truth in that. We have teaching here for a reason. So he can be glorified. So we can be prepared. So the body of Christ can be ready for his return. Amen. I could sing and dance and entertain, but what's that going to do for your problems? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The moment his royal family is completed, he will descend from heaven and assemble all his believers of this age together, dead and the living, to meet him in the air. All the royal family is gathered together for him forever. And all members will receive bodies like his glorified body. See, there's a change that we're going to go through as believers. And that's not going to happen, something that we're not going to sit there and all of a sudden go through a car wash and our body's going to change, we're all going to be in a line. Hi, John, how are you? Good. Oh, I'll be right back. And we're new. It's not going to be like that. I don't know how it's going to be. All I know is what the Word says. You ready? Here we go. This is what the Word says. If you want to argue with me, go ahead. But you're going to have to uh, argue with Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15. It's so clear. Starting at verse 50. Here comes a context test. Now I say this, brethren. Whose brethren? The church believers. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. Yes. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. I'm sorry, but if, if I go up to heaven and I'm a short, fat little baby, I'm going to be mad. Because <laughs> I'm tall, fat baby now. I want to get away from this body. I want a new one. I'm going to slide into heaven, bruised, beaten, and big. I can't help it. I have tried. I've said, Lord, 
Please take the temptation of food away. He said, no, you have to have self-control. But I don't want to control myself. When I see a big old platter of something, I want it and I will eat it. And I will pay dearly for it. Amen. I know it. It's kind of like those people who say, well, if I'm going to hell, I'm going to drink and I'm going to pour alcohol on the fire when I get there. Good luck with that one. I'm going to heaven. Could I live less? Yeah. I could. Instead of me being here 120 years, I might only be here 80. You are not going to get a complaint from me. Because I'm ready just like you are. But he knows the time and the place of my death. Just like he knew the time and place of my birth. Philippians 3, verse 20. I believe that you can be real in church. I believe it's important to be real in church. We can put on a happy face and be all great, but you could be going through hell right now. And don't think I wouldn't know it. He's given me a gift of discernment. I can see it on your face when you walk in. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> it's so clear, right clowns? You can see it on their face. 320. For our citizenship is in this meadly old earth. No, no. It's in heaven, is what it says. From which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of His glory by the exertion of the power that He has even to subject all things to Himself. Recently, we taught about the attributes of God. Reason why it's important to teach that is because how can you love something you don't know? That's the difference between Mr. Right and Mr. Right Now. Mr. Right Now, you don't care about it. You think you don't love. It's now. But Mr. Right, you get to know. You spend time with. You get to know the goods and the bads. You get to accept the goods and the bads. The good news is, is God doesn't have bad. He's all good. He's all truth. And he doesn't change. That's where the two attributes, two out of the many that we learned. You remember that teaching? His veracity, he is truth. And immutability, he does not change, guarantees his promise. Therefore, the resurrection of the church becomes the blessed hope of each believer. We have a hope. Did you, did you have a rough week this week? Something happened that... Or did you have a good week? Good week. I had a great week. The week before that, not so great. But I knew I had a hope that no matter how bad it gets, no matter how crazy the world gets, no matter what I see on TV, there will come a time we'll turn on the TV and we will hear very clearly someone say, I'm God, don't worry, it's all good. <laughs> That's when we come to church on Sunday and I say, guys, now's the time. And then in a blink of an eye, poof, we're out of here. See ya, gone, done. No more bills, no more IRS. For some, no more child support. <laughs> For some, no more really expensive cell phone bills that you can't pay just to talk to one another. No more. We have an eternal future coming up Amen. that's really bright. All the steak we want. You think Golden Corral is cool. <laughs> Wait till you get to the Golden Streets. Amen. That I'm really going to be excited because then we don't have to worry about all that stuff anymore. All that hatred, all that evil, all that judgment. It's broken the church. 
It's busted the church. But the gates of hell will never prevail over the church. Amen. Y'all remember what we did through Titus the other night? A couple, what was that? Two, a week and a half ago? Was that last week? Huh? That was this last Wednesday? Yes. Just so you know, the Lord normally, he like has a time that he prepares me for a sermon. Well, he's, uh, he's up the ante. He's got me almost a week and a half ahead, which is very scary. Because anytime he does it, that means something's going to come up that's going to stop me from being able to study. And I've got to force myself to get back there because a temptation is going to come. That's going to try and get my... Uh, see, the enemy doesn't want me to, to, to learn because if I learn, he knows I've got a big mouth. I'm going to spread it to you. So he's going to try and distract me with worldly things to keep me busy. But God's ready for that. He's prepared for that. So I'm ahead of schedule. I start on Wednesday this morning. I've never prepared for the week before on the morning I'm about to teach because I don't want to get confused. I, I ADHD, GD, I'm all G-O-D. I've got so many initials that there's no, i got to have notes, guys. If I don't have notes, I will, you've seen me. I'll chase a rabbit around every chair. And that's not what he wants. He wants me to be focused so that when you come here for the period of time, you're not thinking just about food like I am. <laughs> but you're thinking about the real food, the one that lasts forever. Yeah. Three hours from now, you're going to be hungry again. And, <laughs> and tomorrow, you're going to be hungry again. And I promise, when we come back Wednesday, I'll feed you. <laughs> Turn me to Titus. You there already? Titus 2. Wednesday, each one of us went through and read this line by line. And it's amazing how quiet it is. You know those who, who sit there, John, who, who don't want to read, right? You should have seen them scramble. They were running to the door. I had to stop them. They, some didn't want to read. All of a sudden, some went blind out of nowhere. Couldn't see nothing. I said, praise God. May they have eyes and see. May they have ears that hear. And boy, through everyone's voice. Because you know how that is when people read? People read with a different like tonality. They, they read differently. So you listen differently when you hear differently. You're used to my voice now. You know that at least for the hour I teach, you won't be sleeping. <laughs> at least some of you. Titus 2, starting at verse 13. And then John has a word for us. He didn't come all this way just to sit there and look good, I know. Looking for the blessed hope Looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authority. Where's Judy? This would be perfect for her. Dang it. Well, Judy, you'll see it online. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to be uncontentious, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. All men. Some. Some men? All. To just the church. No, all. Just a few. Even those one who God continues to strengthen me by when they ask you the question, so what? Okay, i got to chase a rabbit. This is really important. <laughs> I'm in a crowd yesterday, and there's pastors all around me from all different denominations. And one of them comes up to me, clearly a denomination, clearly. And he says to me, well, what denomination are you? And all of a sudden, I found myself becoming defensive. Well, I'm non-denominational. That's my <laughs> denomination. <laughs> that is a denomination. You know that, right? Yeah. And I began to judge him. I began to hear him speak to me and say things to me that are covered in judgment 
and law. And I was just like, I'm going to choke him. Do you not know the truth? But I listened. He says, well, what do you teach? I said, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. He looked at me like I was crazy. I'm observing. I'm not judging. I'm telling you what happened. So I put on the love and truth smile. But on the inside, I literally wanted to sneeze and headbutt him by accident. Because what he was saying was venomous poison. And I couldn't imagine the people that he could be standing in front of. And I said, Lord, just bring him here. We'll give him the truth. He said, you don't have room. I can't bring him there yet. You're not ready. But you will be. And then I met another pastor of another denomination who asked the same question. What denomination are you? And I said, I belong to the Church of God. He said, oh, me too. I'm part of the Church of Christ too. Oh, no. I said, well, at least we have something in common, Christ. He said, that's right. He said, what's your favorite book of the Bible? I said, all of them. He said, mine is Acts. I said, and I'm sure Malachi too, but... And he didn't get that joke. That was my own little... Now, again, see, I've got growing to do. A lot of growing, just like you do. The goal, and the reason why I mention that, you think it's just, it, everybody has a challenge with religion and tradition today. How about the other pastors I met who said, we're not with any denomination, we're just a child of God. I said, aha, here he comes. God is starting ministries every day that is going outside of tradition, that's going outside of religion, because he's tired of it. His justice will not sleep forever. Man can only get along with doing their doctrines so long until he finally says, huh, out, ooh, over here, you, out, over there, you. I know a church right now that one is, was one of the most busiest churches in Sparta that now doesn't even have a pastor. Don't worry. It ain't happening. I mean, I'm not going there. No way. This is my home. This is where we will stay. This is where we will be. This is where we will teach. But I mention that because what we're about to read, what we're about to get into, I want it to sit so deep in you that you know that every time you walk in the Sparta Bible Church and someone says, well, where do you go to church? That when you say, well, I go to Sparta Bible Church. <laughs> and they look at you and go, what? Because we're a new church. No one's really heard of us. But our name got out yesterday. Um, we got rid of about 200 flyers. How many pencils? I was looking for you and I can't find you. And God's like, oh, the clown. I said, okay, there. 144 pencils we got rid of. 44? I know. I didn't say 1,000. No. I know. Yes. No, you don't have no. You have no clue. I'm all about numbers, but go ahead. And he's about to. Uh, I, I'm telling you, he's chopping. I can see it. Yes, Lord, I'll finish. See how the Lord brings us right back. He's so faithful. Remind them to be subjects to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, to malign no one, to malign no one, to be uncontentious, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. For we also. We also once were foolish ourselves. But see, we grew up, didn't we? We got past those elementary things. Disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us. Not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to His mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. It's nothing new. It's nothing added on to it. 
It's by renewing of the Spirit. Whom He poured out upon us richly through Christ, Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, by what? His grace. We might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. 